that Jamaica have a crisis, emergency crisis in mental health. Michelle, you say emergency crisis? And since then, I'm watching them. If they don't know me, I watch them. I don't hear a public education program. I don't see them do nothing. You have an emergency mental health crisis in Jamaica and you know, I do nothing about it. When I send police to kill the same people, genocide. Mama G. Beautiful. We have made a commitment to Mama G to work with her on getting this museum established. You and I already had an idea along those lines, and I see how it can work together. But bigger than that, as an organization, we are concerned about how the Maroons are treated, how they are viewed in terms of protocol. Take, for example, the fact that you had a British Prime Minister arrive the other day. The British signed a treaty with the Maroons that is older than the independence of Jamaica, older than the agreement they've signed with us. Yet you see no Maroons there to receive this arrival. The Maroons really are a sovereign nation within a nation. It should be two governments side by side because they both share the island. But yet we see no representation for the Maroons in terms of our parliaments, our governments, and certainly not when dignitaries come here. They're treated almost as a sideshow, a cultural relic. Six of January alone, remember them which again is a cultural relic. What, what is the point of recognizing the treaty signing? You understand what I'm saying? The Maroons should have an embassy. If they're not in parliament, they should have an embassy in Kingston. They should have a representative to the government if they're a nation within a nation. Now part of it is that the greatest weapon used against us as a race is always disorganization. Part of it is their own disorganization. But part of it also is our willingness to be led by our colonizers mm. and to forget the things that they want us to forget and to be concentrating more on the things that they want us to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. We talk English and we dress English and we pursue English degrees and English scholarships. Right now, some Jamaicans should be asking if they're not a Maroon, how do they become a Maroon? The Maroon should have their own passport. And when a British Prime Minister comes here, rather than lay wreath at the memorial for World War, where black people were not even treated nicely, and where a number of black people died, worse World War II, where them always tell you about the Jews, but they never tell you what Hitler did to the, friend, the, the, the African soldiers on the Rhine, and the concentration camps that they ended up in, and their children. Instead of that, he should be meeting with the Maroons and greeting them, one nation head to the other. So we're going to work with Mama G and we are willing to work with any of the Maroons who are intent on exacting their sovereignty and exercising their sovereignty as it should be. And I'm talking about the Maroons who are caught up in PNP or GLP or the Maroons who are caught up in the politics of the constabulary force. We're talking about the Maroons who want to recognize their strength as a nation. We're talking about legislating ganja in Jamaica. The Maroons could have done it long ago, at will. We're talking about casinos. They could have issued casino licenses if they wanted, at will. They are a nation within a nation. They police themselves. But this is part of what the treaty was about, you know. And planting British colonels or garrisons on each Maroon encampment, so to speak. It was about watering down and washing it down until we forget that we fought a war. Bloody war. Bloody war for our sovereignty. Where is it today? And how is it recognized? Who are the Maroon representatives to the United Nations? And the Maroons are the only people today to beat the British. Hmm.
and we don't just have maroons in Jamaica, you know. So we're talking about the people who should have long been federated and are connected, as Mama G told you, to places like Canada, places like Sierra Leone. Where's their network? Where are their ambassadors? Where's their navy? Where's their army? Wait, is that not the same question Gavi asked himself a hundred years ago? We're still asking today. Are we ready?